What's going on YouTube family? Welcome to Automotive Life. My name is Lucky and today we're going to be talking about 15 forgotten sports cars for under $15,000. Now, this is what's going to make it fun. This is something that every baller on a budget can definitely afford. I know there's tons of these lists of forgotten sports cars and stuff like that. But when I started looking at some of the pricing, we're talking 10, 15, 20 million dollars. We want to find something that's fun and affordable for everybody. So I think this list will be very unique. So there's going to be a lot of cars on this list that you guys might know of, but I guarantee you there's a handful of these ones you have no idea even existed. And if they're not on the list, make sure you put them in the comment section below if you have an idea or something you'd like to pitch in. Now, before I get into the list, if you could do me a huge favor and gently squeeze the like button for you to the algorithm, it also find more amazing people like yourselves and enjoy automotive content. Also, please consider subscribing to post two times a week. So make sure you click the notification bell. And once again, follow us on Instagram at Lucky Lopez. Let's get into the video. So before I start on our 15 forgotten sports cars, we're just going to give you a generalized idea of the vehicles and very mild stats. I'm not going to tell you about the vehicle's beginning, origin, and how it winded up being discontinued. I just want to give you a brief video because I know these videos can take forever. And if you just like any of these cars on the list, I'm sure if you Google them on YouTube, you'll find a huge amount of information if you're interested in getting into one of them. So let's go ahead and kick it off with number 15. Number 15 is the Nissan NX, which is the predecessor to the Nissan Pulsar. This fun little four cylinder sports car was absolutely breathtaking back in the day. I remember seeing it driving around when it first came out when I was a kid and just, it was very bubbly, it had that future look when all the other car, uh, cars were like square and boxy. I remember one of my friends having one in high school and I thought it was so cool, you know, but it just, it looks like such a toy now, fast forward. But one thing you're gonna hear over and over during this video is the nostalgia of the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s vehicles is becoming more popular. And especially with the 80s body, like squaredness, retro styling coming into effect with like the Cybertruck, the new Hummer, a lot of these other sports sports cars and exotic cars that are coming out that have these very rigid lines, the 80s is definitely making a comeback and you're definitely gonna see a trend of this in this list. So the next car on this list is the Isuzu Impulse and the Geostorm. Both of these vehicles had very limited productions, but the Isuzu Impulse had something very special. They had a turbo four cylinder, five speed manual that was all wheel drive. The back then was pushing over 165 horsepower. I've only seen two of these things out in the wild. One of my friends had one in high school and the thing was an absolute monster. He used to race all the Hondas and Toyotas and everybody else that thought that they were fast and he would smoke them with this hilariously little car. Nowadays, it's very, very hard to find them. A lot of these things were just kind of throwaway cars. So they just had them and just scrapped them. This was the generation right before they started coming out with Saturn. So I feel that Geostorms and a lot of these Isuzu Impulses were just cars they kind of slapped together to test stuff out. But if you get a chance to see one of these things, for the technology it had back then and the styling, it was very cool and it was something different. Except for the Geostorm, I'll be honest, the Geostorms look like crap. But the Isuzu Impulse definitely looks something cool. And if you can find the very rare Turbo Edition all-wheel drive, you should definitely buy it and put that on Bring a Trailer. Now the next one we're going to talk about is the Saturn Sky. Now a lot of people either love this car or absolutely hate it. I love the styling when it first came out. When I first saw the concept renderings, I thought it was such a sharp, very unique car. I believe the Solstice had no soul. It was a very plain, bubbly car that you could tell they just bubbled it out to the masses and it became a quote unquote chicks car. But these cars are actually extremely fun to drive. That's why I like the Sky version because it looks more of an authentic sports car. Now you can get the either naturally aspirated two liter and I believe they had the turbo one later on in the second gen. But both of those engines are both reliable, they're fun to drive and the best thing is both those models you can get for under $15,000. The next car on this list, I'm sure a lot of you guys have never seen, it is the Subaru SVX. This car was such a showstopper when it came out. I remember somebody had one in our neighborhood down the street. It was purple and the top of the roof is all glass and it had this like kind of like cola tint to it. It was such a sharp car. Now it had these really crazy things with the windows where they only rode halfway down, almost like a Countach. So if you're trying to order a McDonald's drink or something, you had to literally turn it sideways to pull it in the window. But it had a flat six, it was all wheel drive, but the only downfall is it came in automatic only. But if you look at the styling for when it came out in the early 90s, it pretty much blew everything away. I remember seeing these things driving uh, up and down Las Vegas Boulevard. I see them up and down the canyons. People love these things. Now you can still find these on like Auto Trader, Craigslist, but mostly in forums. People are starting to bring these things back. And now that there's a love for them, people are basically restoring them. 
Last month I told you about the car shortage and why the economy and the car market are spiraling out of control. Smart customers are trying to save their money. But unfortunately, inflation and the economy might weaken the money's future buying power. There's an asset on the market that you likely haven't considered for. It's not a meme stock, it's not cryptocurrency, it's contemporary art. Now, I'm definitely not an expert, but I just saw last week the late co-founder of Microsoft's art collection go up for auction. Six pieces sold for a combined $1.5 billion. So why with inflation and a bad economy are billionaires still splurging on interior decor? Unlike some commodities, fine art is still an asset that appreciates in value, even in tumultuous economic conditions. In fact, the last time inflation was this bad, art prices appreciated an average yearly rate of 17.5%, according to MW Art Index. But if we don't have millions to spend on paintings, what do we do? But with today's sponsor, Masterworks, you can invest in contemporary art from legendary artists like Picasso, also, Monet and Banksy for just a fraction of their full cost. They store the painting, they hold it for three to 10 years, and if the painting sells for a profit, you get a share of it. In their last three sales, they delivered a net return of 17.8%, 21.5% and 33.1% to their investors. Over 550,000 people signed up so far. And with inflation hovering at a high level, the list is growing. But my subscribers get priority access by using my link down below. And the next car on this list is the Porsche 944 and also the 924. These squared bodies were absolutely such a success back in the day. Now I remember when I first started my dealership, you could buy these things for like a thousand, two thousand bucks. Nobody wanted them. But now that the retro style and the kind of the squared boxy look is becoming popular again, these things are going for eight, 10, 12, $15,000. Now, if you're lucky enough to get a turbo one, maybe a rebuilt title or something under that 50K, you should definitely do that. You could factory boost these things over to 300 horsepower and you could drive them every day. But I love the styling. It's one of the first uh, front uh, engine Porsches that rear wheel drive. So if you're looking for a fun drift missile, something to just kind of take out on the track, this is definitely a great car to get. Now, these have such a big following. There's tons of circuit racing tons of aftermarket parts, you should definitely get into them. So if you're looking for something a little bit more on the higher end scale to have that look, Porsche 944 or the 924 is the one for you. Now the next car on this list also has a complete love and hate. It is the Mitsubishi 3000 GT. I still believe this is one of the most beautiful cars when it first came out. When I saw the styling of the first generation with the pop-up headlights, we were all blown away. Everybody thought it was a Ferrari. I remember seeing this side by side with the Ferrari Testarossa and I saw how the build quality on the Ferrari was absolute garbage. So I figured that that had to be a kit car and this Mitsubishi must be the real Ferrari. But I was completely wrong. Once I got in that thing, I was shocked. And then when I was able in my uh, later teens to buy one of these things, I bought myself a 96 3000 GT and I absolutely loved it, it was such a blast. Mine was forest green with the tan interior. Now, this one also had a sister car, which was the Dodge Stealth. Some people love the styling of the Dodge Stealth more than the Mitsubishi 3000 GT. I actually love the Dodge, or excuse me, the Mitsubishi styling more than the Dodge Stealth, but one of the reasons why it doesn't really get, I guess, as much praise is because it had a lackluster all-wheel drive system, the turbos weren't that fast, so the car was a bigger, heavier car, it was more focused on the luxury sporting end than a sports car, but if you were to get one now and boost it up and do some modern things to it, they're just a beautiful car to get. Now, if you can get the extremely rare Spider version, this is one of the first retractable hardtop uh, sports cars in the market. Before Mercedes, before BMW, before all them, believe it or not, Mitsubishi had the Spider before all them. So it's definitely a cool car that if you have a few bucks, you should definitely check out. Okay guys, we just cracked the top 10. Please let me know what your thoughts are on the list so far. If you have any cars you'd like to add, make sure you add them. And if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. And let's go and get back to the list. Is the Saturn Redline. Now this was a fun three door sports car that had the supercharged four cylinder, which was the exact same platform from the Chevy Cobalt. But the reason why I like this one is it looked a lot better. It had the Recaro seats. It had a more aggressive front end. The styling was very cool. They had these crazy wings that came with them, but also the sports suspension handled better than the actual Cobalt. There was a lot of things that made it a much better car. And then on top of that, it was a lot more rare. So when you find these uh, Saturn red lines, you should definitely get one. And this is not only a car that's gonna be collectible, I believe, and with that block styling, it's getting more and more popular, 
but this is something that's dependable that you can drive every single day. And there's actually a lot of aftermarket parts for this vehicle. So that's why Saturn Redline broke the top 10. Now the next one on this list is the Volkswagen Sirocco. Now there's gonna be a bunch of people that have different pronunciations, but either way you spin it, this generation of cars, whether you get the first gen, second gen, or third gen, they're all amazing, beautiful cars. I absolutely love the way Volkswagen decided to take a generic platform and do something very special. Now, people were sleeping on this car for a number of years, but if you look at the styling, once again, that 80s retro style is making that comeback. We're starting to see these things on Bring a Trailer for 60, 70, $80,000. But thankfully, you can look online. I found a few here in Vegas and in California, some 80s models that were in the low, like three to five to six to $7,000 range, well below our $15,000 marker. So if you wanna buy one of these things, restore it and have some fun with it, it's a great way to keep that nostalgic piece alive. And I honestly believe that this is one of the pieces that's gonna jump up in value through time. Now the next car on our list is extremely slept on a lot. I didn't realize how fun and amazing these cars were till I bought one at auction just for fun to sell at our dealership. I took it out and I absolutely fell in love with it. I didn't sell it for six months on purpose because it was my daily driver. I actually parked my twin turbo Porsche and I drove an Abarth. Now Abarth is the Fiat 500. The Abarth is the race version of it. It was a turbocharged four cylinder with a very throaty exhaust. It sounded absolutely mean. I remember driving this thing around in my neighborhood. Everybody thought I put an exhaust on my Porsche. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to see one of these things in public or in person. It just the, the videos do not do it justice. It is such a fun car to drive, something extremely unique. And I think that's why it makes it onto this list is because it's something that if you pull into a parking lot, this is gonna sound hilarious. You'll see maybe four or five Corvettes, maybe four or five uh, Porsches you know, at the mall. I guarantee you, you'll be the only Abarth in that whole entire parking lot. And when you fire it up and you start revving it in front of all these people that paid $150,000 for a car that doesn't sound half as good as yours, you will be the one looking like a rock star. So definitely do not sleep on the Fiat Abarth. It's such an amazing car. Definitely check it out. The next car on our list is an extremely controversial car. This was supposed to be a massive pivot for Ford. We're gonna be talking about the Ford Probe. Now, when the first model came out in the early 80s, people were completely shocked. This thing looked like it was from the future with its crazy pop of headlights, sleek designs. I actually love the second generation more, the 90, I think three and above, but I'll show you pictures of both right now. This car, believe it or not, was supposed to replace the uh, Mustang. That was its whole plan. They wanted to basically put that car to rest because they believe that front wheel drive and this new technology was gonna be the future. But unfortunately, the Probe was so far ahead of its time, a lot of people didn't like the futuristic styling and plus, they it kind of freaked people out because this is one of the first times where they publicly said the car was built by Ford, but a lot of the parts were made by Mazda and other manufacturers. So it was kind of that, um, I guess, weird early 80s slash late 90s type of vehicle. But I love the 96 Ford Pro GT. I thought that was one of the slickest cars. When I was in high school and I'd walk by that thing, I'd see a few of like used ones around my area. All I wanted to do was save up money to buy one of those things. And unfortunately now, I've tried to find one. They're very hard to find. I did find two in Arizona and two in California, but none in Vegas. But they sell for anywhere from 2,000 all the way up to like eight grand. So if you could find a very clean Ford Probe, I believe this is another one that's kind of a weird car, but will be going up in value. So we finally made it to the top five cars. The number five car on this list is the Volkswagen Corrado. There's a million pronunciations, but that's the way I pronounce it. This is an amazing styled car. I remember looking at this car before I bought one back in like the early 2000s. I thought it was such a sexy car. It was very squared, it was very rigid, but it just had just enough like sleek appeal that made you wanna buy it. They came with a supercharged four cylinder, that's the one that I had, and then they also came with a VR6 later on down the way. Now, I preferred the, uh, the supercharged four. I'm looking for one of these things currently right now. I have such fond memories of driving around these things. I actually flew to Seattle bought it. Um, I don't know if you guys know where Blaine Washington is. It's literally on the, the brink of Canada. I drove it all the way from there down to Vegas. I absolutely love this car. The stylings, everything else, and once again, that 80s retro style box look is becoming very, very popular. I started looking at these things online just for fun when I started researching this list. 
I seen some on Bring a Trailer go for over thirty, forty thousand dollars. The ones that are in really good shape, that are all original. But luckily for you, I started looking on like Facebook, Craigslist, and everything else. I found a few in Arizona, a few in California. Like I think one in Utah, but none here in Vegas, unfortunately. But they were going anywhere from three to eight thousand dollars. So still well with under our fifteen thousand dollar marker. So if you want something different, something that's very nostalgic, and something that I guarantee you none of your friends have definitely check out the Volkswagen Corrado. So the next car in this list, unfortunately, is more forgotten than anything. It is the Lexus 430 convertible. Now these things produced in the mid 2000s were such a great accomplishment for Lexus. It was their first basically return back to a two door hard top convertible. They had the V8, it was fun to drive, it was very dependable, but it just couldn't kick the stigma of a girl's car or wasn't performance based. Now these things are fun to drive. I've seen a lot of people turn them into all wheel drive, put turbos on them, do crazy things. But the best thing is, is now that these things have been out for a while, you can get them for relatively inexpensive. And I believe that the body style was a sharp looking car. So if you're looking for something different that's kind of semi flashy, but you need that reliability and dependability of an everyday driver, definitely look into the Lexus SC430. These are the top three best forgotten sports cars under 15K. Number three is the Jaguar XK8 and XKR. These things were simply breathtaking when they came out. I remember seeing them in the James Bonds movies in the early 90s. People just saw that and was like, wow, what a touch of class, what a touch of elegance. It reminded them of the early sports cars and a lot of the British racing heritage. And they were just very well done. Now, my personal pick is I love the coupes. I did not like the convertibles. The coupes gave it such a streamline. I had a 2001 XKR um, and a 2005 XKR, which is the supercharged V8. And these things were just breathtaking. I would shave all the emblems off them so people didn't know it was a Jaguar and I painted them crazy colors and people could never tell what it was. Now these had an all aluminum V8 um, breaking over 300 horsepower. If you got the later models, they were 4.2, those were around 350. And if you got the supercharged, they were anywhere from 375 to $500, or excuse me, 500 horsepower in the later models. But these were very great cars because this was the only Jaguar I saw that was dependable. All the other Jaguars kept breaking down, but for some reason with the Jaguars that I had, the XK8s and the R's, we very rarely had problems. It was actually shocking. Even during my dealership days of me selling these things, I would see these, I would get nostalgic, and I would go buy one just to sell on my lot, and people loved them. My dad saw the one I was driving and loved it so much, he actually went out and bought a 2002 with like 80,000 miles. And so he still has it to this day, and he drives it on the weekends with my mom. It's just one of those cars that just it stands the test of time. So even if you buy it now, I've seen these things for five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars it looks like such an expensive sports car. And if you could find an XKR coupe, you'll be much better. And if you don't wanna spend the extra money for the R, the four liter is more than enough. It's got that nice classic sports car with the touring style body, but it's such a sleek look. So definitely don't sleep on the Jaguar XK. Now number two is near and dear to my heart. I actually have one of these things sitting at my shop and it was actually one of the vehicles that I first started on my projects here on the channel. It is the Mercedes-Benz 190E. Now there's gonna be a few models I'm gonna talk about. So when I first got mine, mine was a 1987 190E 16-valve. It had a Crossworth or Cronsworth, or whatever you wanna say, uh, four-cylinder motor that was breaking about 170 horsepower back in the mid 80s. So when I first got it, I actually raced in a circuit where I'd race against stock Corollas, Camry, stuff like that, and we would smoke them because these cars barely had 80 horsepower and I had 170 horsepower back then, but the car was extremely heavy. Now, fast forward to today, these cars, the 16 valves, are getting harder and harder to find and they're going way up in value. Even the Evos, if you could find an Evo, there's 60, 70, upwards of $100,000. Now the one that I currently have is a 1991 Mercedes-Benz 190E Sportline. It's the straight six with the five-speed manual, sports suspension, and the sports seats in the back. It is a very cool car. I bought this one with a rebuilt title for $1,500. I absolutely lucked out. It was during the pandemic. The guy that I got it from didn't know what it was. I told him I'd buy it from him. I ended up trading him a Tahoe that I got for 1500 bucks that I was gonna sell for five. But I showed him this car, he loved it, took it, poof, and now I got my beautiful car. These cars were such an icon back in the early 80s and 90s. When BMW was ruling the uh, roads with the M3, Mercedes decided to step up and make the 190 Evo and the 16 valve to compete with it. 
And that's why these cars have such a massive following. And also following with that retro style, the 80s block squared look, these things are becoming extremely popular. So even if you can't afford the Sportline, the 16 valve or the Evo, don't worry about it. You can get a 190E very, very cheaply for three, four thousand dollars put the Evo body kit on it and you're right there. But these things are, believe it or not, are extremely dependable, they're fun. The one I had had 290,000 miles and this was back in the early, I think it was, yeah, probably late 90s, early 2000s. And I drove that thing all across the United States. Once again, I, I went up to Seattle, Washington to buy it and came all the way back to Vegas, drove to Texas, drove to Miami. I drove this shit out of that car. But to me, it was one of the best things I ever owned. It was my very first Mercedes that I ever owned. And I think this is one of the cars that had that pivotal moment for me to make me fall in love with vehicles. So that's why the 190E uh, 16 valve Evo is so near and dear to my heart. So if you get a chance to buy one of these things or even buy one of the stock 190s, you should definitely take advantage of it. So we finally made it to the number one car. This was my very first supercar that I ever bought. And the reason why I use supercar is because when it first came out, these cars were over $100,000 MSRPs. This is the BMW 840 and 850i's. These things were simply amazing cars. I bought mine out of Canada. The guy basically broke it, couldn't get it running. I ended up buying it. Mine was an 850i with the V12 six-speed manual. This was the first production car that had a six-speed manual. And just the looks, if you look at the styling in the picture, the pop-up headlights, the sleek back end, I thought I was Batman driving mine. It was black on black, I remember driving it all over here in Vegas, up in Washington when I lived there for a little bit. I thought I was the man. Nobody knew what that car was. People thought that I stuck this badge on that car. And this was like in the early, or excuse me, late 90s, early 2000s. So the car wasn't even that old. They stopped making them, I believe, in 93 or 94. And so these cars were only a few years old and people still couldn't figure out what the hell they were. But even today, I'm actually buying one right now. It's an 850. Unfortunately, it's not a stick, but I'm getting it for around $5,500. And it's a beautiful car. I can't wait to add it to the fleet. You're gonna see it in the video. But if you wanna buy something that's gonna push the envelope, I believe this car is it. This had such a massive significance for BMW. This was their flagship model. Now, this car, believe it or not, had a higher top speed than all the Lamborghinis and Ferraris at that time. This thing was just a beast on the road. And I remember driving it with the six-speed manual. I thought I was Batman. But if you get a chance to find one of these things, definitely take up the time. Now, these are very large, heavy cars. They are not very quick. If you get a modern Civic to today, that car will actually beat it from stoplight to stoplight. But if you're on the freeway and you're revving out that V12, and the V12 only has about 300 horsepower, but the way it gets on the freeway and how smooth it transitions is an absolute blast. And with those pop-up retro lights, it just sends you back. And still with the styling today, if you tint it out and you add some wheels and you pick a fun color, that car looks very modern. And once again, we're going back to that retro look of the very squared streamlined edges. These cars are starting to pop. People didn't really care about these things. They forgot about them. I seen them in the junkyards. All of a sudden, there's starting to be these forums of bring them back, get them back, and people are out there buying them. But if it's something that you like or something you want to get into, definitely do your research about the vehicle. Look, up, look online. I mean, it's just an absolute beautiful car. But anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I try to put out some different content. I know talking about the car market is frustrating, and sometimes talking about negative stuff kind of gets us all down. So I wanted to have something fun that reminds me of why I love cars and why I love the car industry. And I figured this list would be something fun, something different. But out of all the cars on the list, which one is your favorite? And if I missed one, please put it in the comment section below. And if you have any more suggestions for videos like this, once again, put them in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe to us at Instagram, at Lucky Lopez, and we'll see you next video.